Hello and welcome back to Dev with Sev. I'm Sev the Dev, and today we will be continuing our Let's Create in Unity series for our 2D hack and slash game. We will be creating our logic for the character, and we will cover player input, movement and jumping, attacking, enemies, and animations. We have a fair bit of work ahead of us, so let's get started. We will start by creating a new folder, naming it Source and adding a script to that folder, and name it player. We can now open up our character object and add the player script as a component. We can then right click and edit script, and it should load Visual Studio for us. First, let's set up the variables we will need for input and movement. We want a keybind for attacking. And we are going to set this by default to mouse zero, which is left click. We want a keybind for jumping. And we are going to set that to space. And lastly, we'll need a public string x move axis. And this will hold the string horizontal for when we get input for the x-axis. Now we need to set up our movement variables. First we're going to need a public float for speed. And we'll set that to 5f by default. Then we'll need a public float for jump force to decide how much force we're jumping off of the ground with. We'll set that to 6. And we'll also need a public float grounded leeway, and we'll set that to 0.1. This variable will be used to determine how long the raycast will be to check if we are on the ground or not, and we'll make that method in a moment. Now we'll need some private members to apply physics to our character and to track the values from our input. First, we'll need a private rigid body 2D called RB2D. Then we're going to need a private float called move intention X, and we'll carry the value from our X move axis. We'll also need a private bool called attempt jump. And this will be flagged true when our jump key is initiated. And we'll also need a private bool attempt attack. And just like the jump, it'll be initiated when you press the attack key. To make this more readable in the editor, I'm going to add two headers to our public variables. The first is going to be for input. And the second will be for movement. In this script, we will be using the start, update, and fixed update Unity functions. The first method we need to make is get input, and we are going to use this function to register the player's input in update. Get input is going to be a private void function. And in here we have to track the values from our input. So first we're going to set move intention x to input dot get axis. And we're going to pass it our x move axis. Then we're going to set attempt attack to input dot get key down, and we are going to pass it our attack key. Likewise for attempt jump, we are going to set it to get key down, and pass it the jump key. Now to start moving our character, we need to verify that the rigid body 2D component exists. We can do that by doing if 
double tab for the statement, get component rigid body 2D. And if that's true, let's go ahead and copy this. Let's set RB2D to get component rigid body 2D. Now we need to make three new methods to handle running, jumping, and attacking. Handle run will be in fixed update. This is because we will be constantly updating the physics of our rigid body in this method. And the other two will be in regular update. Now let's go ahead and set up the bodies for those three functions. To calculate the velocity of our rigid body, we're going to make a new vector 2 and pass it our x and y speeds. Our x component will be our move and tension x times our speed, and our y component will be our current rigid body 2d y velocity. If we go back into the editor, let it load, and then press play, we can see that our character will now move left and right. He doesn't turn yet, so we'll need to add a few more lines of code to our handle run method. Back in our script, we can go back to handle run, and the first thing we're going to check for is if move intention x is greater than zero, and if our transform dot rotation dot y is currently zero, then we want to set our transform dot rotation to quaternion dot euler zero one eighty one eighty zero. We only want to rotate on the y axis. Then we can do else if move intention x is less than zero and transform.rotation.y does not equal zero. We want to set our transform.rotation to quaternion.euler zero, zero, zero. What this is saying is if our move intention is greater than zero, or we're trying to move right, and our current rotation is set to left, set the transform rotation to 180 degrees, which would flip our sprite across the y-axis to face right. Else, if our move intention is less than zero, or we want to move left, and our transform rotation dot y does not equal zero, so we're not facing left, we want to set our transform dot rotation to zero, or the original rotation of our sprite. Now back in the editor, we can click play. Now if we move around, we can see our sprite changes direction. If you find that your character is clipping with the colliders of the ground, you can create a new folder and name it Physics Materials. And you can right click on it, create, and make a new Physics Material 2D and name it Character. Then we can set its friction to zero, open up our character prefab, find our capsule collider 2D, and then drag the physics material into the material section. Now if we save that and go back into our scene and click play, we should find that our character doesn't actually clip on the ground and he's just sliding across the platform. And that's going to conclude part one of our character implementation. In the next part, we will cover jumping, enemies, and melee attacks. Please let me know down below if you have any suggestions for this series. Thank you very much for watching. This is Sev the Dev, and I will see you all in the next one.